ويريكم آياته فأي آيات الله تنكرون Till the beginning of 20th century, the people thought that the universe is static, and there is no start and end for it. It was a reason for materialism to deny the existence of the Creator. But in modern era of science, several researches, observations and calculations have been done, which shed light to some cosmological facts. However, science is not 100% through because there is always variation in theories, but we select those evidences which are highly confirmed by science today. So one of those cosmological facts is that the universe is constantly expanding. The idea of expanding universe was proposed in early 20th century by the Russian physicist Alexander Friedman and the Belgian cosmologist George Lemaitre. Through some theoretical calculations they found that the universe is constantly in motion. And later on in 1929 the concept was confirmed by Edwin Hubble. And Edwin Hubble sat there at his, this very big telescope, night after night, studying the heavens. And he found that the stars are moving apart. The stars are moving apart. And he wasn't sure why, but it was, it was clear that the stars are moving farther and farther apart all the time. The distant galaxies were all rushing away from us, establishing that space itself is stretching, it's expanding. Like a balloon. When you blow, it gets bigger and bigger. Something like that is happening in the skies, in the heavens. These galaxies, they're receding from us at a faster and faster speed. That means the universe is expanding. The Quran mentioned 14 years ago in Surah Dhariyad, chapter number 51, verse number 47, that we have created the vastness of space. The Arabic word Musyun means vastness or the expanding universe. So, if we reverse the expansion, the galaxies will get closer and closer until a point where they were blended together. And if we continue the reversing process, they would be pushed and pushed until we reach to a point where there was nothing. There's really nothing. There's no space, there's no time, there's no matter, there's no energy. It's nothing but the potential to exist. And out of that bursts the universe. Well, where did it take place? It took place over there, it took place over there. Where did it take place? Actually, it took place everywhere. Because the universe itself was extremely small at that time. It's impossible to describe the moment of creation in human language. All we know is that from what may have been nothing, we go to a state of almost infinite density and infinite temperature and infinite violence. The Arabic word Bid'a means the creation of something out of nothing. This word also connotes the fact that something is created not on a pattern previously designed of something but as a completely new entity having no precedence. So the greatest marvel of creation is the creation of all concepts out of nothing. And what's amazing to me is that the laws of physics allow that to happen. And it means that our whole universe, everything we see, everything that matters to us today, could have arisen out of precisely nothing. So they say that this universe came into being with a big bang. The Big Bang Theory. Who says that? The most learned men of science, astronomers. Allah says, Awalam yaral lazina kafar. He says, do not the unbelievers see. These atheists, these agnostics, the people who deny the existence of God, can't they see? In other words, Allah expects them to see, to be able to see, to witness. Awalam yaral lazina kafaru. Anna samawati wal arda kana daratkan that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. And he split the messenger. Who is he talking to? Who is he addressing? Kafir. Which Kafir? The Badwins of 1400 years ago? No, no, no. 
He is talking to the men of science, men of learning, who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. So after the explosion, I mean the Big Bang, what should be there? Smoke or clouds of gases, right? Science calls it nebula. A nebula is an interstellar cloud of dust, hydrogen, helium, and other ionized gases. Now here the Quran says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ الدُّخَانِ Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke. So there was smoke, the nebula, but in a bigger amount, because it was a few seconds after the explosion. Dukhan does not merely mean gas, it specifically means smoke. And today scientists say that smoke is a more closer and more scientific as compared to gas because that time it was hot. Imagine, the Quran mentions 14 years ago which we discovered recently that the initial celestial matter of the universe, it was in the form of smoke. So in a time when there was no knowledge about the formation of the universe, how could a man talk about the Big Bang, the nebula and the expanding universe which are all confirmed by the modern science in 20th century? Indeed, these facts indicate that Quran is not words of a man, rather it's words of a wise creator who created the universe and knows about it in details.